So good morning. It's day five of the Trail of Transformation. And we had a great night. We got an early start. Uh, we're getting an early start this morning. All packed up, ready to go. We've got a full day of hiking and looking forward to that. It's incredibly beautiful. We're really starting to see the mountains in the distance with the snow. And so we're really approaching the Sierra Nevada mountains. Um, we wanted to share a little bit this morning about how Chris and I ended up out here in the middle of nowhere uh, mm -hmm. together. And um, it really started, uh, you know, we went to high school for four years together in Warren High School. And um, we were members of the uh, wrestling team together. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the Warren High School Ponies and Chris, uh, Chris was a, a very good wrestler, took second in the state of Minnesota. But we, uh, we worked together and um, wrestled a lot with similar weight class. So that was uh, the first thing you want to share about the uh, Boundary Waters? Yeah, and um, this is not our first adventure together. <laughs> this is uh, actually a lot of adventures together. We, uh, as young kids, 16 years old, we went up to uh, um, Boundary Waters Canoe Area up in northern Minnesota and had an eight-day canoe trip um, that we shouldn't have done. <laughs> likely but it was a great great adventure and when I say I, we shouldn't have done it it just was surprising that young people would do that but we had a great time together and really brought us together as, as good friends yeah that was a, a sophomore and freshman Chris was a year behind me sophomore and a freshman in one canoe out in the middle of the wilderness with no GPS no you know none of that and um, so anyway it was a different time back then that uh, kids got to do that kind of thing and then we went uh, for two summers, we worked together, we, we went away from home, about eight hours, right? six, eight hour drive, right to the tip of Minnesota and um, on Lake Superior, where Minnesota and Canada meet. There was a Ramada, I'm sorry, a Radisson resort there, and we were waiters for two summers and made good money. We worked, we worked breakfast shift and dinner shift. And we worked <laughs> as much as we could to make as much money as we could. We lived in a little log cabin. I mean, literally a 20 foot by 20 foot cabin, uh, uh, just a mile from the Canadian border, yeah, right? Yeah. So that had its own unique experiences. Um, and then, uh, and then I went to school at ASU, uh, and uh, uh, Chris finished a year of high school while I was a freshman, and then uh, Chris came down to Tempe and joined me for a year at ASU, and we lived together for I think a semester. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But had a lot of experiences there before Chris went back to uh, University of Wisconsin. So anyway, we've had a lot of experiences. We went to Alaska together yep. uh, after we got out of school and, uh, and we're working and stuff. And, and then, um, you know, things kind of, I think for a while there, we got a little bit separated. Yeah, things, had, things were happening. I had a lot of children, three children. Mm -hmm. and So things are going on. And, uh, and actually then about a year ago, and we, had, Chris uh, and his wife Susan, I visited with Paul and I in Phoenix maybe three years ago, right? We got mm -hmm. together and, and a year ago I sent him a text message <laughs> and it was like, I don't know exactly what it said, but hey, what do you think about doing the Pacific Crest Trail? You know, just blah, blah, blah. And um, it was just a text, right? And uh about 10 minutes later, Chris says, count me in. <laughs> and, then he, and then sometime after that, I was like, how many miles and how many days do we do? <laughs> Still in, I said, but my wife was sitting next to me and uh, she knows Tom really well. And we just looked at each other and said, absolutely, this, this, is, this is the best. So we're, we're very grateful to be blessed with wives that let us do this with, uh, with Susan and, and Paula. And uh, so, anyway, that's why we're here. That's how we're here, I mm -hmm. guess. Mm -hmm. And we're enjoying the getting back together and, and going through this. There is some memories of the Boundary Waters. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we had a bear experience up there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it was pretty interesting and, and some other challenges. So I think we experienced some trauma. There was, there. Some there was, trauma, just a little. Yeah, some, maybe some bear trauma. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, that's a whole different story. We're, not, we're prepared for bears, but we're not planning we're on bears up here. Okay, that's enough, and uh, we'll, we'll get on the trail. Thanks for joining us.
So we've hiked uh, three miles so far and we've got a great water spot. So we're filling up our water bottles and um, filtering it and taking a short break. day five for our trail of transformation. Uh, it's been great so far. We're having a good time. Uh, we got to uh, 10,000 feet today. We were able to look back and see the meadows that we walked through far long ago, long, long ago a few days, a few days back. And uh, it's been very fun to see that. Uh, one of the interesting things is we uh, have to do a lot of planning for water. Water's key out here and we have to look onto maps and see where we can get those. Um, when we get to the water, we're very much relieved. And it's beautiful water, it's clear water, and it's mountain water, and we're enjoying that very much. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Chris mentioned uh, it is the end of day five of the Trail of Transformation. Thank you for joining us. Um, tonight I wanted to introduce you to a very special human being, uh, Coco Barrett. Coco joined Outreach 360 in 2004 as a volunteer in the Dominican Republic and became the country director responsible for our entire program there. Then moved to Nicaragua, founded our program in Nicaragua as a country director there and before the pandemic uh, coco was working on a virtual program for volunteers to be able to work with our students online up until that point for 26 years volunteers traveled to the dominican republic or nicaragua to to teach and work with our volunteers so we were ready when the pandemic hit to start a virtual program and coco has designed that and managed that and led that uh, so that we've migrated 
um, transitioned, transformed from a program that was working with two small communities, one in the Dominican Republic and one in Nicaragua, to working with students throughout Latin America and with volunteers literally around the world. So she's done a great job with that and very passionate for it. I'm so impressed with her. Um, Coco is a, a CEO and president of Outreach 360. And tonight she's gonna share a little bit about the Outreach 360 English Academy, uh, what it is, the impact it's having on our students and the impact that your donation will have. Hello, my name is Coco Barrett, and today I would like to share with you about the Outreach 360 Virtual English Academy. We are now in our third year of operation and what a journey it has been. When I think about our academy, I think of the words ignite, inspire, empower. Our academy ignites potential, inspires change, and empowers dreams. We are a rigorous, year-round Monday to Friday after-school program that provides educational leadership and service opportunities for children and youth in Latin America. Now, all of our students attend on a full scholarship. They are connecting daily for English classes. If they need support with Spanish literacy, they're also connecting for a Spanish class. They have opportunities for a lot of enrichment and other activities. They are attending virtual field trips. They are meeting guest speakers from around the world. They are meeting professionals representing many different careers and learning about different companies. As they get older, they are involved in life prep, preparing them to take international language exam, uh, certification to become a teacher, getting ready to be a professional, getting ready to have the skills to be successful at university. And of course, that giving back piece, they're learning to serve and take on leadership opportunities to support the newer, the younger students in the same academy. We have two different programs. Our first program is a beginner level program. It takes about two years for the students to complete. And when they finish, they are like beginner pre-intermediate. They can have basic conversations. They could read, speak, write at like a basic level for most everyday conversation topics. Now, those students who have demonstrated like great dedication are invited to attend a more advanced program. And in this program, our goals are for them to become fluent English speakers, certified English teachers, global citizens, international leaders to have like developed tech skills and really be ready to become a professional post university studies. A lot goes into to making our academy happen and it wouldn't be possible without dedicated students and their families in Latin America our virtual volunteer English teachers who connect from across the globe to teach our students, our small but mighty leadership team and board, and of course, our student sponsors, our servant sponsors who not only donate monthly, but also join our academy and tutored students, our corporate sponsors and donors. I would like to take a moment right now to acknowledge Tom and his good friend, Chris, for taking us on this trail of transformation and providing an opportunity for Outreach 360 to gain awareness in the world, as well as raise much needed funds. I invite you to learn more about how you can be involved and make an impact with Outreach 360 in our virtual English Academy. Thank you, goodbye. You can hear the passion in Coco's overview of the Outreach 360 Virtual English Academy. And I know that the three-person staff of Coco, Alma, and Adi work very hard to make these opportunities available to our students. Yesterday, day four, we received no donations, so we have encountered a hopefully short-term plateau at the $5,950 raised mark. I invite you to make a donation today. Help us climb Transformation Mountain and help provide life-changing opportunities to Outreach 360 students. Thank you. 
I am dedicating today's hike to Outreach 360 President and CEO Coco Barrett for being the past, present, and future of Outreach 360. As an example of the past, as country director in the Dominican Republic, during a two-week period, one spring break, Coco was responsible for 800 volunteers, picking them up and getting them back to three different airports, providing housing and meals at three locations, and coordinating their service work in many different Dominican schools. As the founder of our Nicaragua program, she designed and developed a learning center as a service location for hundreds of volunteers. Currently, she is at the heart of implementing and delivering the Virtual English Academy program. And she has her eyes on the future as to how we best support our students throughout Latin America, as well as our volunteer teachers joining us from around the world. Thank you, Coco, for all you have done, are doing, and will do.